Um, welcome to Drinking Broettes. Yeah. Brought to you by ghostbed.com. Um, what's your week? What's your week like? How's, well, let me ask you, because it seems like you're asking me, because <laughs> how's yours been? It's okay. Uh-huh. It's a week that, like, nothing is working out. I hate those. Do you know what I mean? And when it starts off on that foot sometimes, you just have, like, you know what? Let's just be done with it. The whole week. I'm just throwing it all <laughs> away. I think you also will it to happen. Like, yeah. when you, like, nothing hap- nothing good happens one day or nothing works out, you just go, like, ugh, nothing is going to happen. Nothing's going to work out this day either. And then you, like, put it into existence. Mm-hmm. And then nothing works out like you're late you know what I mean Mm -hmm. or the kids are all sick or the things aren't going out or whatever it may be like everything at work is not right like you know what I mean the problem with kids too though uh I don't have them but what I've noticed with my girlfriends is that it's not they're not just sick for one day no it's not just like oh poof it's gone it's multiple days and sometimes it progressively gets worse yeah So I know that's been your life. When you have two kids, you just live in like a Twilight Zone uh, Bermuda Bermuda Triangle of sickness because it just like goes back Uh and forth through everyone. And when someone when one of the kids is well, the other one will get sick. And then as soon as they're done being sick, they've somehow passed it on to the other one. And you're just like it's a never ending cycle of never ending cycle. Um, had my birthday though, yes, and happy I got birthday. a bunch of nice messages, and it was super fun and good and chill. And I was in urgent care, and it was yeah. fine. But <laughs> it was urgent care is really chill. Urgent care is super chill, and I like got to chill there for like three hours. Really so calm. like I was chilling. The ambiance. Do you know what just, I mean? Yeah, wonderful. The smell, the magazines. Uh, yeah, from like 1999. So I like brushed up on all my like. <laughs> Ben and Jennifer Aniston breaking up news. Man, you were good for the last decade now. Yeah, yeah. Because they just don't ever update magazines there. Not current life, but the last decade. No, no, no. Yeah. And I thought, isn't that funny that Mm -hmm. now these magazines that they will not change are becoming current again? Oh, yeah. Because now Ben and and, uh, Aniston, Mm -hmm. Jennifer Aniston, are hanging out again. Sure. So now it's like full circle. And I think that's a good idea that they just left them in there in the waiting room. Even styles, right? Mm. (laughs) Beauty trends and all this stuff. It comes back full force. So true. Side pony. Uh Oh, well, I've been doing that for the longest time. I've been doing that since I was young. Right? (laughs) With a, the scrunchie yeah. all day long. You know what has not came a back, which I'm surprised, print? is the, um, the t-shirt pulled to the side hip with the held by a scrunchie. We have sort of this thing. Do you remember? I'm glad they're not doing it anymore. They kind of are. But remember when there was like every shirt had like a tucked up thing or like. Or on the side. On the side or in the middle. Mm. It's kind of still happening. Kind of. Depends. Where it's like you can't ever get a shirt that's not like scrunched up. Some oh, wear. I see. You I know what like I mean? The scrunched up ones, but I will tuck sometimes. Like it makes it look a yeah, little bit more. Yeah, but I want to be able to choose. Me too. Like I don't want you to oh. tuck it. Do you know what I mean? Like have it tucked for me. Oh, I have not seen that. Oh, they're often. everywhere. They're oh. everywhere. Well, it's so, you know, I think it's funny. It's Ross's birthday. Yeah. Today. We have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's interesting that we're doing, are we doing a relationship question show? Yeah. Sort we're doing of a today? relationship show today. Relationship. <laughs> Well, I figure there was. <laughs> <laughs> they oh, listen. So they, they are relationships. Sometimes. The relationships. So it's appropriate because me and my husband have birthdays that are one day apart, and Perfect. I don't know if that's good or bad. I, I don't like know if the that. signs really like are real or not. We're a lot alike. We're a lot different. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I was, was like, going to ask. Oh. Did you guys get married purposely? Because you're like, oh my god, our birthdays are in the same yep. month. Like our signs sync. Mm-hmm. Or, it's but that's not the, the way it works, though, is it? I, no, you I, actually shouldn't be with. I don't. You shouldn't be with your same sign. Okay. Um, you're supposed to be with like a more compatible, like across the aisle sign. Which again, oh. I don't really. I don't know either. Subscribe to these, but um, two Pisces together are supposed to be an absolute nightmare. Mm. And you know what? Sometimes that's true. That makes life interesting, doesn't Mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. If signs was a thing, and if I paid attention to it, then I never should have married Chris, because he has the exact same sign as my ex-husband, which my ex-husband's also named Chris. 
And so apparently I have a thing for Chris is born in so April. So you don't break patterns. Okay, so <laughs> born in April. I don't learn my lessons. I don't know. Apparently. What is yours? What is your sign? Uh, I'm on a know? cusp, I guess. So it's like Libra Scorpio, like right there. You're a Libra Scorpio. Like and right then in he's the an Aries. I don't know what he is, his is. I, I don't think know. April is. Is it? Aries. I, I don't think. know. Or Aquarius or something. Anyways, one of the like more. Like yeah. sensitive, fluidy, like oh, I can see that ones. for sure. Sensitive. And you're more of the um, intense. By scorpion, your <laughs> scorpion. Okay, well, Libra is apparently very different. Like there's scales, like it can go either way. So I, so you're a fair, you're fair. Maybe I'm like but when bipolar, someone, scorpion. Yeah. Maybe I'm a bipolar scorpion. I don't no, know. like you're fair. Like uh, Libras, that I means? think are very, um, like oh. fair and balanced, right? Like I don't have my days. Some days, sure. not so much. So, eh, um, whatever. Do you guys... Uh, <laughs> I'm curious with this, with the birthday presents. Oh, God. Oh, that's, that's a phone. With birthday presents, right? Yeah. Uh, or birthdays. Since you guys are only, like, one day apart, does he... As we only celebrate mine. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay. He's said before it's kind of like having your birthday after Christmas. That's what I was wondering. It's because, like having your birthday on a holiday. Yeah. And I didn't know if he just lumped your guys' up together or if he just ignored yours and only paid attention to his. You would think, right? <laughs> so I didn't Because know. it's Ross. But it's not, actually. He, we will, since mine is That's first, cute. right? So, and I guess it's whoever's lands on a weekend sort of thing. Yeah. So, like, mine was on the weekend. So we just, like, celebrated mine, which, yes and no, right? Like, we sure. went to dinner. It was no big deal. But... Um. Yeah, we usually like because I have all the friends, <laughs> and he doesn't. So it's everyone's there, and like it's so sad sometimes because like it'll Aww. be his birthday too. Yeah, and they'll be like, "Happy birthday, Jesse!" and like get me stuff, and it'll be like, and it's his, it's his too. But didn't you say also it's that Ross too. is the type of guy that he just will kind of he has a few close friends, but he'll just also cut people off too. Once yeah, I mean he's he's fine with like we kind of all have the same friends yeah. but um yeah he has his group of friends like from college and that's pretty much it and then yeah. like dan okay yeah. do you know what i mean and jared and the guys at this yeah. point yeah and the guys i can see that but they're not here so it's like as far as friends you time, hang out yeah. all the time with he doesn't really have any you know chris doesn't sometimes just hang right? out with the bros and if he does like it's for an event or whatever like he doesn't just go hang out with a, a guy friend are you guys getting um couple friends are you finding like friends where no yeah, it's impossible, by the way. <laughs> it is. It's impossible. I don't know why. It's a girl's cool. The guy's it's a loser. It's so hard to if find the guy's that balance. cool, the girl's boring. That's our biggest issue so far, is all the girls that Finding. I like, he does not like the, he does not mesh with the dude. And his guy friends, I do not really mesh with the girl. It's yeah. really uncomfortable. So. Yeah. And there's it's only so much impossible. you can do. There is a, there's a movie, like some comedy they did a while ago about it, of mm -hmm. like trying to find adult couple friends yeah. like a, a couple that's like i say power couple because it's like if you're both cool that's insane well that's it's why, really really hard to find that's why i love the night when you and ross and chris and i with dan all went out yeah that was fucking so much fun because we all like ross and chris were doing their boy bonding shit they were making out did you see them make I out i swear they were making out but tongues the, like, were in each the other's mouth shot yeah you I and i like, were having a over, blast like, yeah dan would just bump from group dan to was group dan. right and it was nice because yeah. it wasn't like we had to do the, like we all talked as couples sometimes when we had our inst our own yes, private and that's conversations and it wasn't like we were all over each other we all sat like separate it was a blast but when yeah. we all came together it was fun and yeah. it wasn't awkward so yeah. that was that's what I want but the issue is is we can't drive two hours out here I know and it's it's, it. it's rare though it and is. you will find it and especially when you have kids too because like the kids will play oh, with people yeah. that like. You don't necessarily get along. Like, it's a whole fucking another ball of shit. I know. I can only imagine. I, I know it's hard to find friends. I can only imagine how hard it is to find couple friends. Yeah. So, yeah. There's very rarely, too, and as you get older, too, very rarely couples that, like, actually still like each other <laughs> and have fun together. So that's the issue, too. Is Especially I don't when they want, have kids. I don't want couple drama to rub off on us. I don't like being... Right. Or you can tell in co yeah. couple drama. Mm -hmm. I've hung out with. There's been like a couple before where they were in the middle of a fight and I had no idea. And then I like went up. I was like, "Hey guys, what's up?" And they got me in the. They tried to get me in the middle of it, the yeah. fight, and tried to pull me in either mm -hmm. direction. And mm -hmm. I was like, "No, no." And then they were like punch. 
Like the girl punched the dude in the face at the bar, and I was like, oh, I I, like I do not want to hang out oh, with you yeah. guys. <laughs> This is not. Oh, yeah. This is, I mean, you make me look really not, good to my husband right now. Not quite at that level yeah. anymore, but it is they were never definitely friends, like. But I'm just saying, like, as I saw now, them, I was like, I'll, Chris and I will never hang out with you guys. Yeah. Now, at this age and this level, and like kids at a certain age, you encounter people that are just generally don't like each other anymore. Correct. And so there's just a general, we're fine. We just don't really get along so they don't necessarily want to like go out together mm. uh they don't necessarily like the the good sign is that the girl always wants to do girls night only right <laughs> and the guy only wants to do like go out with the guys if you mm. want it's very rare to have like a couple past a certain age or sure. time that wants to like really hang out with each other yeah um thankfully i do have that that's good you know yeah and um we do just want to hang out with each other so even like dinner on birthday it's like i'm fine yeah you know what i mean so that'll be good that's what it was and also the in between 30s mm, you know what i mean it's yeah. like celebrate 35 yeah celebrate there's a really big 40. milestone ish it's yeah. like 30 and then 40 and then 40 you hit and you're like holy shit. 40 i think i'll do if I'm like looking good, feeling good, I might do like a big party for 40. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? See, I and wish like, Fuck I you. didn't do one for 30 and I wanted to. Um, I lived in California at the time and everyone was doing like the dirty 30 yeah, things yeah, yeah. and like everyone was doing like these really big extravagant birthdays. And so I ended up coming out to North Carolina to like I flew out on a, like uh, that weekend to hang out with Chris and yeah. we just chilled together. And so part of me was kind of like hoping for like the. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a surprise. No. no okay. No, it's okay. No, no, no surprise no. birthday party. Yeah. But uh, it was one of those things where, you know, I was like, maybe I'll just do a big one when I'm 40. I think so. That, that's worth it. Because then if you're like, again, if you're looking good, feeling good. Like, I'm going to look good because I'm going to be... inject it with fucking Botox and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> like, just be real. the kids will be older and I can like go to the gym more and shit, shit like that. Yeah. So it'll be I'm like. I'm going to have kids mm, and pop them mm, out. And then probably then. by that time, they'll have some kind of scientific thing that will just like sh- take me back and I'll look exactly like I was 30. So that scientific thing at or that point. a better cure for hangovers. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Which would be better. <laughs> Because that's the only thing that I dread, that I'm dreading as I get older, is the hangovers just get worse and worse as yeah. time goes on. Yeah. Like, that's how I know that I'm now a full-on adult, mm-hmm. is that, and then putting plastic bags inside other plastic bags and saving them. That's how I know I'm an adult. Oh, <laughs> is that on a TikTok or something? That was on a, a, a meme. <laughs> that's really good. I try I not to do that. I try and just throw them away. No, I do that. I don't like a bunch of shit. I do that all around. time. That's how I know I'm getting old. So I want to talk really quick. I know some of our listeners really like us doing these Bachelor recaps. And I want to talk about this, but also get into this other show. Oh, my gosh, you guys. That I told you to watch based upon our listeners telling us to watch it, too. So let's just talk about The Bachelor really quick. And there's only really okay. one thing that I want to talk about. Okay. And that's Maddie. Are you kidding me? What? Let me get your take on it. What a bitch. Really? Yeah, what a bitch. Is that sarcasm or are you being real? No, I'm being serious. Okay. Like, um, I don't know who the fuck she thinks she is mm-hmm. or who she wants to be or whatever, but um, the time to think about when your morals and your standards and all of this shit uh-huh. is when you're signing up for the fucking bachelor, <laughs> not when you're about to go all the way to fantasy suites when maybe someone else got fucking sent home. Mm-hmm. Because he had no idea sure. that this was something which is a big thing. Mm-hmm. No idea that this was something that um, could happen to him. So you blindsided him. You're a fucking bitch. And the mom is probably talking about her. But anyways, what do you think? The mom? Oh, um, I, I'm curious because of editing, right, with the whole season, is if they, because her being, her talking about herself and opening up to him of course, I feel like she would talk about her faith and these things. Obviously, she didn't talk about intimacy yet, mm-hmm. but I feel like he would at least from the very get go, knowing her and seeing her and talking to her every so often. And we don't see that. That's like off screen, whatever. 
that they don't show a show that he would get. I don't s- think they talk off without some, the camera there. Just so you know. No, but I'm saying is like when you see. Okay, but here's the thing: when they're on a date, it's like two hours long. Or yeah, so four like hours things long that they didn't. And they're put hanging in. out all day, which is you see the clip on television, sure. and it's maybe ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what I'm saying is they don't show the whole conversation. A lot of it they like to show just a dramatic part of shit. Sure. So part of me thinks to myself, okay, I really would think that this guy has gotten a grasp a grasp of who this chick is. While I don't feel like she placed an ultimatum ish on his head, and yes, she did. Not as blatant. It was more so like I don't think it was as blatant as Luke P was personally. Um, Luke P was like, "This is what Luke P said to Hannah." Luke P said, "If you have sex with anyone, like you will not have sex with anyone else." He did it in a controlling manner. He goes, "You will not have sex with anyone else. We will not be together." I do not. Basically, as if he owned her body, right? Mm-hmm. He was controlling her, mm-hmm. where she basically said, like, hey, this is, like, what I believe in, and this is who I am, so I'm just saying, if you happen to be intimate with someone, you could potentially, like, lose me, but she didn't say, like, you were going to lose me, so you better not do it, right? So I feel mm-hmm. like the way she went about it was a little bit nicer than what we've seen in the past, but, I mean, I guess still in a way that if you want to look at it, well, it could have been, like... Well, it was an ultimatum, so she should have been pretty clear with her ultimatum. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to be wishy-washy about the ultimatum, and yeah. then when you find out that he did do something, then you leave... That's an ultimatum, but it wasn't an ultimatum that he really understood. Mm-hmm. So you were a bitch. You're very passionate twice. about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, what the fuck? What do you, I mean. That's not, what I mean. Well, and this is where we're going to disagree. That, yeah. So, but here's, a, so here's my thing that I completely agree with her, right? Is one thing she has to realize, okay, she is going on this show. And for the most part, people, are, they don't always talk about what they do in the fantasy suite. But if most people assume you're having sex or being intimate. That's not always the case, though. Um, for her to bring it up a little bit later, I'm not really the biggest fan of. I think she should have brought it up earlier, especially with her virginity. But I do not blame her at all. She, and the point that she made that I agree with, and this probably has to go back with my background, too, with like how I grew up. But she just said, listen, I don't want you to propose to me and choose me as your wife and say that I'm the one and that you love me when you literally just had sex with a girl six days before and I don't blame her because I'm telling you right now if any dude who was proposing to me then go into the real world and find someone in the real way if you go on the fucking bachelor Mm -hmm. that is how it goes that's not no there's there's nothing written that says that you have to have sex no there's nothing written have you watched The Bachelor before? What are we even fucking talking about? Yeah. Have you watched it? Why are you so aggressive right now? Oh, my God. <laughs> because it's... You need like, a sedative? It's calm down. So they <laughs> they go into the fantasy suite. Yeah. And then they pick people from there. Uh-huh. But that's just... Everyone doesn't have sex, though. That's but the they thing. do. No, they don't. Hannah and Tyler didn't well, even have sex. Well, it's kind of the time to see if you are physically compatible. That's, like, sure. the point. Like, the point of the show is, like, you kind of get, you weed out your people, you get to the very end, then you find out if you're physically compatible, then you pick from there mm-hmm. to find out if you're going to be with someone for the rest of your life. So with most people, they kind of want to, like, see, you know, if they're physically compatible because it's a really big deal in mm-hmm. relationships. I would say it's probably, I don't know if it's 50-50, but you'll, like, people will talk about it later on. And p- half the people will be like, we did not. We were not intimate. There's nothing, so that's the thing, too. Even though you've seen it, and even though, like, other people do it, doesn't mean that's, like, that's what you have to do. Right. Right? So that's mm-hmm. the big, and there's nothing that you sign that says, like, hey, by the way, when you accept for a fantasy suite, you have to now have sex with this person. Like, oh, my God, that's terrible. Right. You know? So I get both sides of the fence, because... At one point, it's kind of like, oh, honey, what did you expect? Like, I get that. Yeah. At the, at the other point of it, I also go, okay, like, I completely get where she's coming from because if a guy's going to propose to me and say that I'm the love of his life and I'm the one he wants to marry, I don't want him banging some chicks six days before or at least two chicks six days before to figure out what. So it took sex to figure out that you really love me, you know? Like, that's not the case right. that I want there. At least that's me personally. And right. I know people might disagree with that. Right. So. <laughs> You are on the, one. <laughs> you were on one. Bachelor, Tiffany. No, I, no, we're talking I get about it. the Bachelor. And like, I think you're I get getting. It. I think we're getting a little bit confused of like what real life no, is. You're, yeah. And the Bachelor, where the and Bachelor is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And it's you're been right. on for thirty fucking seasons. So when you go on it, mm-hmm. you know what you're getting into. And the stupid thing for me, it's like. I don't even judge these girls for going on. Like, you know sure. what you're getting into? You're going to fucking do this? Well, this is most hardcore of them, let's be, shit. Let's be real, though. Most of 
them were going on just to get the clout and to get like some type of clothing deal or like further sure. their, their career. But it's also going to be a really crazy experience. You're not going to have your fucking phone. You're going to be with all these girls for mm-hmm. this whole time. He's going to be dating 20 something girls, whittle it down to you. Then there's going to be fantasy suites that you really can't tell him what to do in the fantasy suites. That's something that's like widely known where it's sure. like. You, oh, you can't. They no, don't you can't have tell them. to. They don't have to have sex, but also they don't have to tell you. Like mm-hmm. that's the whole point of it too. It's like even with Hannah, she was like, "I don't have to tell you what I did." Mm-hmm. Like you, this is the process. You knew what you were getting into. It's at this point, you know, when you make it that far. I just think to then start talking about real life is like, you know. I don't know. It's yeah. The Bachelor. Do you know what I mean? I know. Like, I think that's the hard think, part, too. Is I think of a course lot of, you wouldn't do that. You th- would never even go on The Bachelor, right. and either would I. And so, so I think that's the problem is I would she never was speaking want to marry someone. common sense, right? Which, right. When you th- you're right. When you but think I about think it, when you look at the whole conversation bachelor- to have, like, when you are, like, when she is seeing that she's, like, getting further, not, like, hometowns, mm-hmm. fantasy suite, yeah, I, that's what I mean. I don't, and then I don't have like him be the, like, at least yeah. from what was shown, that she brought it up that late. And I think where it was prompted, when you think about it, was her mom, right? Her mom sat there and had the conversation. Oh, hey, did you tell him yet? That's so another thing. Part of me wonders, wait, what were you going to tell him, right? So I get it. Like, it, here's the thing. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. I guarantee this chick sitting there going, I wish I would have done it earlier. I wish I would have said it earlier. Yeah. Maybe I wish I would have never even gone on the show if this is the way it was going to go down, right? But I think the issue is we're trying to place like, hey, this is reality. Like, this is what real life, this is what people would do. And, like, that's not The Bachelor for the most part. But I yeah. think, also, people are going on The Bachelor more nowadays and thinking that maybe if, like, Colton, for example, his whole season, right, he didn't choose any of the girls. He went after Cassie, and Cassie left. Right. You know what I mean? So right. that was different. And yeah. I think some people want to shake it up a little bit and say you know what i know for the most part everyone probably bangs in a fantasy suite but this is like against who i am and so maybe she'll change for me if she really loves me and but that's and controlling and it's not change and but ult- like do it's this. an ultimatum it's controlling to me it came off as um controlling it also came off as like she was really into it and then she went to her she went home and i think her dad and her mom got into her head which I think you know she's in college and she's older mm-hmm. like um I did see I think a, I, that, I think that she too. maybe was thinking something and then when she came home and her dad was talking to her potential boyfriend about how pure she was disgusting puke but like I think that she kind of like got snapped back into her reality yeah. which she is very controlled in her house I could tell Mm -hmm. And so she wanted, it felt to me like she transferred that onto him really, really late in the game. It made him super uncomfortable. It made it a losing game for him. It made it like you, essentially she was saying you need to choose me right now. And that's not how the bachelor goes. That's what what I mean. That's what Cole did with Cassie though. That's what I'm saying though. You know, oh, so she was trying to pull a cult. I, I, I don't know. Maybe. Like, I don't know. And, and that's a maybe, thing, too. So maybe way, she was just like, don't even do anything with anyone else. But again, like, what a life. Like, and the, well, and here's the thing, too. The what's way that going to be like? The way that she went about it wasn't like you were saying. She did it, and it still, to me, was in a loving way. It was like, hey, like, I completely understand. Like, I'm not telling you. Like, I know we're each going to have different lives. It was very different than bam, bam, bam. Right, right. But, but when I will she say, found I did see out, the shift. I did see the shift, and this is why I can say, growing up in a similar-ish household, right, is you grow up in this way, and either you take the same path as your parents, you decide to take the same path as your parents, you decide to go a different path. Okay, and with her, it seems like she decided to take this path, and I don't know, if, like I know that my parents tried telling me, like, hey, these are the things we want for you. But eventually got to the point to where, like, hey, you need to choose these things for yourself. And I would hope that her parents are doing the same thing for her. Not saying, like, you have to do this. But, hey, this is what we hope for you. But if you want to, you don't have to if you don't want to. And I think what I notice is sometimes you get pulled into the whole, the real world of things. And she was with all these girls in a house for I don't know how long. And she saw, like, she got became accustomed to certain things. And I think she became okay with it, right? Because she yeah. was around it. And then she went back home and realized maybe she felt bad about it or all of a sudden like oh my gosh I 
I completely forgot about this. I was wrapped up in the whole right mix of things. So it does it does make it difficult for for her. Yeah. So, but again, it was a loving ultimatum. It was a loving in the yeah. beginning. I, yeah, I would say. Yeah. And then when he, she found out that she ultimatum didn't, ish, yeah. which she didn't get what she was hoping for, mm-hmm. the ultimatum was enacted. So, but I, I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Her. Like, respect she said, for her, though. Right. It, you know what I mean? She here's the thing that I can respect have respect for her in this aspect she's holding fast to her values no matter what even if she's on a show and you know a bunch of people are going to disagree with her and not like what she did if she doesn't leave then it's kind of shitty right so if her leaving is like okay this is what i felt and now i'm leaving that's her sitting there saying like this is what i believe and this is true to who i am and i if she would and i still love you and respect you but then it would have been shitty but this is what i have planned for my life and you know good like teach her own she wants to remain and give that gift to her husband and give her all herself that's wonderful um and she's trying to stay true to that so that's at least i can commend her for that instead of being like wishy-washy and being like oh you know like i guess i'll just throw down like the 20 something years of morals and values i've been hoping for the rest of my life just for you buddy like you know she did that when she went on the bachelor so like she We'll agree to disagree there. (laughs) When you went on The Bachelor, you let go of a little bit of your morals. Like, I don't even have that many morals, and I wouldn't go on The Fucking Bachelor. Well, sure. I mean, mean, like, shit. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't go on because I wouldn't be able to do the things that even in the first night you have to do. Sure. Which is, like, him kissing 20 girls. I know. trying to vie for his, like, attention and get that fucking rose. And that's what she said. I can't even do that. And that's what she said, that she raped did put a lot aside i guess she like yeah. i don't know if these girls know it's him beforehand or like what but i will say that is i'm curious what her real reason is to why she did go on the show if this is how it was going to be but you know there's a lot of people who like to change the storyline of things yeah right well. which let's change the storyline really quick because this okay so everyone was saying if you guys think the bachelor's crazy or if you guys are talking about the bachelor you guys need to watch love is blind yeah so and I'm done with The Bachelor. Like, Love is Blind is everything. Yeah. So just you wait. <laughs> it's just you wait with Love is Blind. Okay. So Love is Blind has host Nick Lachey. And what's his wife's name? Oh, my god. His gosh. wife. I always say Brooke, but it's not Brooke. Oh, Vanessa. No. Vanessa Lachey. Okay. So they come in. They have a huge group of men and women, right? And they have the men live together in this building. And the women live together separately in this building for, what, 35 days? Yeah. I think it's 36 days total. 36 days. And they go into these pods they call them which has like a couch and booze and stuff in there and the pods are to connect it to one another but you can't see each other but you can hear each other just perfectly fine so which i think is weird too like, i think they weird hear too. each other like, like even really whispering well. yeah i'm like how fucking thin like, really, are those really walls well. like, yeah you, what happens if you fart in there like you're on a legit oh date. dude you you can like for sure smell people yeah super legit yeah, yeah 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 so um they have the guys go in on one side and the girls go on the other side and then they all just start dating without seeing each other each other so the whole premise behind the show is for them to see if people can truly fall in love with someone for their heart their soul and their personality like who they really are and if love is really blind if the society norms of race and looks and size and height and just everything really matter you know and so in these 35 days, I don't, so I don't even know what episode two, like, cause I've watched so it all to the it's finale. It's been five days and there's two proposals. Okay. You got a lot. Oh, like, I have oh a whole my God. while, there, but. Dude, just you wait. Cause we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Cause there's yeah, some people but this is something who we can like the keep fuck out and mean about. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I guess. Yeah, the finale is this Thursday. So, by the way, if you guys want to know where it's at, it's on Netflix. You can binge watch it, which yeah. I, my husband and I did. Um, you, you can binge watch it up to thing. the finale. Yeah, in two days. So, it's this like, was shot like two years ago, right? Was it really? Yeah, because I think they had to, they have a reunion. They have everything. So, oh my it, God. this was like, because they had to still like live, live with each other. You know what I mean? Get married. Yeah, but they don't live. And then, Do you know how long they live together? It's like only a couple months, right? Mm-mm, mm. Two weeks. We'll talk about this. Okay, oh, so okay. here's what happens. So they all go on dates, right? And they all talk to each other. And you figure out pretty quickly, I'm sure, like who you vibe with and who you don't. And yeah. then later on, you get to continue to pick like who you want to go on dates yeah, with and yeah, stuff, yeah. it seems. The only way you get out of the pods and the only way that you see the other person even talking to you the entire time is if one of the other proposes and the other one has to accept the proposal. Yeah. Right. So it's crazy. And I will say, like, when the first proposal, like the emotions were like 
no other proposals were really like that. The emotions were okay. so strong there. It was crazy. It was crazy, right? Um, I liked him though. I, I like him a lot. Yeah. You'll you'll really like him. Okay. Um, so they go on, and so after the proposals, which you guys will, I'm sure, have your favorite couples and figure it out. Yeah. They go on a one week vacation to Mexico. So all of a sudden, oh, right? So all of a sudden they see each other, and then that's where. Not all of them, but ha- at least half of them have sex, right? Because they're trying On, to figure out. In Mexico. Out- in Mexico. Because okay, yeah, yeah. they're trying to figure out, like, yeah, yeah, is this yeah. what I want? And then after that, they have three weeks until they're married. So they have four weeks together. Oh, okay. Have- it's four weeks. So okay. after the pods, they have only four weeks four together weeks to get in married. person. Yeah. And so what happens is after the, the, the Mexican vacation, then they all move into the same apartment complex together. And you'll see because there's a guy, Barnett. I love Barnett. Oh, you won't later, probably. I'm sure much. I won't. You know why well, I love Barnett? Because he's the worst. Okay, so Barnett and like up, I am attracted Barnett to the worst. Barnett ends up really liking multiple women, of course, and if, like eventually like leading a few on. And so one of the one of the other girls ends up with uh, another guy. Yeah, right. And oh, so, but then in the apartment, in the apartment, yeah. So I'll just tell you who my least favorite so far is, is Jessica. Really, she's 34 years old. I hate her. She that she, voice. Oh, her voice drives me insane. I had to ask Ross. I go, would that voice do it for you? Yeah. Ooh. Her voice. I mean, but it's beyond the voice, right? But that's all here's, you hear. Here's, I know. But here's the issue now. Is that as you get to see her more and more. So she's 34 years old and she acts like this 24 and stuff. She's so beyond them. Like, oh, I'm so much better than you. I'm so much older than you. I've had so many years. Like, I'm so much more, so much more mature. She is so lost. Jesse, she has no clue what she wants in life. She doesn't even like. She doesn't even love herself. She doesn't even know what she wants. Clearly she, not. She is a drunken mess. Oh my god! Really, Jesse, I haven't wait. seen oh, that yet. She oh. and you know what? She is adored by the guy that picks her, and she takes advantage of him and treats him like shit and just is wishy washy. Oh, it's ter- yeah. So basically, where I'm at right of now course. is we're at where they're doing the weddings. Okay. Right, so that's where I'm at. Like the okay. last, the finale is where you see if they get married or not. <gasps> and so, I, like, I'm really nervous because, of course, I have like a few couples I'm pulling for, like the scientist uh, and Andrea. I forget what his name is, and, and the the black chick. I like oh, them yeah. a lot. Do you think it's insane? Um. Okay. So one thing I will say that I like about Love Is Blind is that one, I like the fact that this reality show is on Netflix, so I can just binge watch the hell out of it. And then also, too, these seem like very just average normal people. Whereas yeah, The Bachelor, not like, yeah. they all just the, they're all no. Instagram models. Yeah, and they're all Instagram actors. Models. And yeah. I also like the fact too that none of these people are going to try to sell me shit after the show is on. Yeah, right? and go, you never deals. know. But yeah, but for the most part, that's like the Bachelor franchise. Um, I do really like the fact that they are taking this and saying, like, hey, can we see if these two people can really fall in love just, like, with their personalities and not with their looks? They did, for the most part, pick pretty attractive people. Like, none of them are really ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, However, for them to rush it in the four weeks and just, oh, I think that's ridiculous. It's Like, I think it's a good experiment, but it's based on, uh, I guess, Vanessa and Nick when they uh, first got together. Is it? Not like they first got together. They obviously knew what each other looked like, but they were not in the same state or something for a really long time in their relationship. So their sure. whole relationship was like talking on the phone. Well, that's how Chris texting. was. Yeah, and so you kind of get to know each other without having them physically around you all the mm-hmm. time. The difference is they knew, you know, what the other person looked like well, and that's stuff. A, yes, but and that's the thing, too, because, like, when Chris and I first met, we were, like, really good friends, right? And then yeah. once we eventually did end up talking, like, years, like, you know, years later, I already knew what he looked like. And yeah. I already knew we kind of had, like, we were friends, but we also kind of just had that connection, yeah. right? Where we just really got along really well. Uh, we talked for hours and FaceTime yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. And we did have to build that up. And it was great because we became yeah. best friends. Of course, I got to decide before I even wanted to, d- you know, like before we even got like super serious into like being engaged mm-hmm. and have sex with him yeah. and be like, oh, okay, this is amazing. This is going to work. Yeah. Right. But this to me is a little bit more. It's I mean, crazy. listen, it's TV, right? They have to, I feel like yeah. they have to do this But we've definitely taken it up a notch. Like, we've definitely taken Bachelor to the next level. I mean, engagement I like all the way to marriage in that short amount of time. Like, 
it takes the craziness of Bachelor getting engaged at the end of that whole season to a whole nother level. As unrealistic as the show is, I still feel like it's more realistic than The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Yeah. Because number one... I can see that. They Even though they are dating all the rest of these people, right? Most of these people are like in their mid-20s to mid 30s yeah so to me they're not just some little young buck coming off the street having like never fallen in love in the yeah ever that's in their true life. because right the bachelor and the bachelorette they're like 20 i know they pick all the young girls the young like, people bro. right and so all these people like a lot of these people are yeah. pretty well established true. They, they've been through relationships they know what they want the yes they're talking and dating people but they're not having sex with a bunch of you know right what I mean? so you it, it's, and so then they pick the person right. and then you actually live together and you're yeah. only together with this person for three weeks instead of like all these other people around and you meet each other's families and the fam and you will see some of the families are like so loving and supportive about it some of them just won't even talk to you know for sure. their kids anymore but some of them are very loving and supportive and i think one of the families i forget what they said but they said listen when a couple comes together it's they're they're now separated from the family that's dumb, yeah 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 right that is dumb and families can be in their lives and i and they said that, I, that we feel like if a family is in their life they should be supportive and loving and comforting mm-hmm. they should not be a problem for yeah, that couple, yeah 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 right yeah because that couple's gonna be together no matter what they're right. adults they get to make this choice and to right. me i was like oh, i wish i wish all families thought that <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly I, I wish all families thought that but um i mean and not my family i love my family yeah, yeah. uh but it's yeah you'll see but i do like the show a little bit better than I mean, okay. a lot more better than The Bachelor. Well, I mean, I'll definitely be able to binge it in, like, it. a couple days. So I will be ca- totally caught up next show. Yeah. It's still crazy. And then we can talk we about it a little bit more. we still have The Bachelor going on. So it was just, like, and The Bachelor I know, two but here's to three the thing hours. It's, so. like, my buddy John was, again, like, texting me all about it yesterday. Because he, he was like, are you watching it? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm watching it while I do my Excel spreadsheet yeah, work. Yeah, And the waiter was going back and forth and... We just were like, really? Like, two weeks until the finale? And then you have the woman's hall? Like, you're really just dragging this out. Dragging this And you're going to get to the point out. to where it's just so shitty that I, I wonder if people are still going to watch it. Probably. Seriously, but. with Love and Love is Blind on the horizon? I know. I, I think, think I'm even, done. I think they even have a second season coming up. I think, like, I think they showed yeah. it. Um, but the finale is this Thursday of Love is Blind. Where, like, does it come out? Like, it comes out every Thursday on Netflix. Oh, but it there's like, already a but bunch out already. already. already so oh, many okay, episodes, okay, okay, you can okay, binge okay. it. It's the same thing as so like... So I can binge it before Thursday. Yes, Perfect. you can. Perfect, okay. Perfect. Listen, set... Listen. listen. Kids, fuck you. Husband, listen. no. Take care of the kids. Yeah. I'm gonna Nobody watch touch Blind. me. Nobody touch me. <laughs> I don't want anyone breathing on me or touching me for an hour. Yeah. Do you know how hard that know. is? So I'll try. After, So we'll get into some sponsors, but after that, I have... Listener questions. Yeah, we'll get into a couple about relationships. Listener questions. Yeah. Um. Let's go first and foremost. Ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Yes, Drinking Bros. We're just gonna make it easy for everyone across the platform. Um. Are they still doing twenty five percent off at this point? You know it till March third. Till March third, twenty five percent off. Um, for President's Day, which you guys, President's Day was so long ago. We've given you so much time at this point to get 25% off. When this deal is done, I don't want to hear anyone like, hey, is the deal still going on? Yeah. Hey, are they still doing the president? Oh, I missed it. Oh, can I? No. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. You missed your opportunity. You missed your point. I mean, how long have we been doing President's know. Day? You know what so, I think I'm going to do with the 25% off sales? Get a cooling pillow. No joke. Get a pillow. Yeah. Like uh, after us doing our live and you talking about it even more and people even tell me that they got a few because yeah. of that, I just was like, I think I need to get this. You can never I have would. too many fucking pillows. I would. You know? Ever. I would say if anyone's thinking about changing up their bedroom set, get the ghost bed lux, get the pillows, sheets, and pillowcases and get 25% off and then get on a pay as you go, no interest mm-hmm. plan. And be in a comfy, cozy, amazing bed, completely top to bottom for like 40 bucks a month. Yeah. Like you could do that. It will come in like two days. Just decide to do it. Do the 25% off. Don't be a fucking loser. (laughs) Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we have Mm strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code. 
Lady Boner. You got this. Lady Boner for 20% off. Um, How much? 20% off. Oh, okay, I thought you said 28. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> 20. 23% off. They're very strange. They're they don't very like weird. to go. Just- yeah, they don't like to go hard, you know, easy numbers. Uh, 20% off. I suggest if you haven't tried Strike Force, it's a liquid energy, comes in a little pack. Liquid is important. You were impressed with that because mm-hmm. that means you can put it in any liquid you want. And if you want to be gross. Really well. And put it in red wine and coffee. If you want to be a dirt bag, <laughs> yeah, you could do that. But you never you have, don't to have to worry about it being chunky and yeah. like the consistency and water, everything else. Lacroix, yeah. White Claw, uh, and no little, carbs, no sugars, no gluten, just pure energy. A little goes a long way. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I don't you know think I mean? I've bumped up to a full packet yet. Like and if you do, I'm half. sure you can probably use a full packet in a gallon of water or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Give it like definitely. a little bit of flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of energy throughout the entire kind day. Like, it's perfect. Yeah. Oh, I want you to do that. Because I stop drinking coffee at two is my cutoff. Mm, okay. And then I start drinking wine, as you know, around mm-hmm. five. Mm-hmm. So what do I do from, from two to five? The midday. The midday slump. And that is the worst because that's when you're tired of shit. And all I want is a glass of wine and I can't because I'll go to sleep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I need that strike force to kind of <laughs> get me into the wine time. Yeah. yeah. Strikeforceenergy.com uh, promo code Landy Boner. Next up, we have a real live sponsor. Mm-hmm. Care of. Um, Takecareof.com. Our promo code is BTE5050. Um Care of is a wellness brand that makes it easy to maintain your health goals with a customized vitamin plan that helps you feel your best today and supports you in the long term. So you t- you took the quiz, right? I took the quiz. Have I you loved- gotten your stuff yet? I got no. mine. Yeah, I love taking the quiz though because it was very like in depth. Quiz. It was very informative. It really went into certain you know areas where you didn't think that. Oh, okay, yeah, those are good questions to ask. And then yeah, they you're tailor not you're it. not like why the fuck are they asking me? Correct. Yeah, they tailor it to you to your lifestyle, to exactly your needs. And yeah. I, that's what I love. And you get to choose between like packets of things um, or a vitamin plan or just like proteins, powders, things like this. You got your Zen, you said? Um, yeah, I got my collagen. How do you like the vanilla collagen? It's so good. Is Everything it? they have actually tastes. Their big thing is like tasting good. Uh-huh. Like not like weird powders that like have no taste or don't taste good or whatever. Yeah. Um, everything tastes really good. And I feel like I have a little bit more energy uh, and maybe some elasticity. But I just started it. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's going to take a while thing, to, like, to kick in. The thing I love about this being a sponsor and coming on is I'm like on a kick. Like, you know, like you get on a kick sometimes you're like, OK, well, now I'm going to like go to the gym every day you like totally were a loser all weekend and just like ate pizza or whatever and you're like yeah here we go now we're getting back into the week right yeah and you just want to organize stuff and you want to like feel best your best like Monday you want to have everything taken care of yeah um and that's what this kind of did for me where when I took the quiz and put in all the things that I wanted to improve on and then have the customized plan of vitamins and powders and everything electrolytes coming to me I was like I felt really good and it kind of got me through the next three days like before I it came that. you yeah. know of like all right I'm doing it yeah right you make your bed you get the vitamins like that's what I kind of felt like uh-huh. so and it makes this thing makes it really easy taking the quiz just getting it sent to your house yeah um and it's with our promo code BTE50 it's 50 percent that's more than any other sponsor that's has ever given ever given us for anything. Yeah. So that's off your first order. Like I think it was like twenty something for the stuff that that's I got. That's nothing. Yeah. I know. Um, great company and us ladies like a good like website layout. Oh like, yeah. Cute. It's so good. It's so easy to use. Just go check it out if you just want to take the quiz. Uh, maybe pick one product or not. It's just just find out what you, what you need mm-hmm. um, to move forward. And if it's easier for you to get it from them, do it. Support our sponsors because they support us. Now, yes. let's get into some relationships. Let's get into these questions. Well, I love that we had questions sent in by guys and girls. Oh my gosh, yeah. guys and girls asking about relationship advice. So oh here's, gosh, from what, us, here's from us little oh, dum dums, okay. and that's the thing that I'm going to preface right here. Right. 
Here's what I'll say, at least for me. Um, number one, I am no relationship expert. Yeah. Number two, I've me been either. through my fair shares of relationships. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. While I have learned a lot of stuff on the way, I'm still learning a ton. Sure. Okay? Sure. Number three, I don't even like to talk about my relationship as much, as much, especially on social media, because by no means am I some perfect picture cut out, you know, of a relationship. Okay. And also, uh, with this, every relationship's different. Yeah. Like, they really are. You yeah. know, so what we might like and what we might say in, as advice, some people the might only be like, thing oh, we I can, don't know. Yeah, the only thing we can go off of is... from is advice and um, our own I've experience. dated our own experience. Yeah. Um, I've dated every type of drummer, so <laughs> I am good for that. Yeah. Well, so if, I like if it's that. a drummer, that was one of the problem with the drummer. How do I, I get a you. drummer? Okay, there we go. Um, throw a rock <laughs> anywhere, and you'll find one that is an alcoholic and wants to date you. Absolutely. I've never dated a drummer in my life. Really? Then again, I also had a problem. Like I tried to date civilians when I was in the military, right? And they just uh, they couldn't handle like a, a strong military chick for the most part. Oh yeah. And a drummer is going to be like a yeah. little bit more aloof. Like you're going to have to kind of, again, you're going to have to throw a rock. Yeah. At they had a hard point. time dealing with it and understanding my job and were very intimidated by the job. For so sure. for the most part, I would end up liking guys that were really strong alpha type, but then I'd eventually find out they were military. And most of the time they were like some type Do of we like special ops in the military. I was like, damn it. I can't stay away <laughs> from you guys. <laughs> like what the fuck? Do we like the military chick in, um, Love is blind. You'll see. Okay, you'll see. <laughs> it's a little much sometimes. Thank you. Okay, so this question says, okay, ladies, so want to know what is and isn't okay to put up with in relationships. So, at what point are we being too picky as women and we're giving up really good significant others for super small things that do not outweigh their good stuff? I and talked it, about this on Ross Patterson Revolution. Did you? And this yeah, is yeah. one of the things that was brought up too. And okay. at what point are we damaging ourselves by staying in toxic relationships because bad love is better than you know? Because we think to ourselves, bad love is better than no love. Mm -hmm. We know everyone has flaws, and it's uh, you know about being self aware. Um, and knowing when to say no. So people always are seeking advice on these things. And uh, I'm sure that you have, you know, advice on this. You guys talked about it on air. I'll, I'll say like a few little things to me. Like there's a difference between compromising and settling. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think there's a big major difference and you have to figure out like which one you're doing. And so I never did this really before, but I think for the most part, everyone has like a little list in their head of things that they are looking for in a relationship, like deal breakers or so. Mm -hmm. After my, well, I don't even want to say failed marriage. I guess it was failed, but I learned a lot from it. Yeah. Right? Um, and going through that divorce, I sat down and literally in a notebook did three columns. I put deal breakers, which are the things that like this, the next guy had to have. Like no matter what, like if you do not have these, I'm not dating you. Mm -hmm. I put love to have, like, it, I would love if you had this. And for the most part, a lot of those were more so into the realm of, like, looks and, you know, a couple yeah. other things that probably didn't matter as much. And then the likes to have, which I was getting really nitty-gritty, which is the, the yeah. like to haves was... Hi, we're airing. Yeah, I know you okay. are. That's uh, some fan mail for you guys from uh, listeners. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thanks. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I was Thank like, what are you, you doing? <laughs> Welcome, yeah. Thanks, Ross. Uh, I was like, what are you doing? Uh, there was a box that says Lady Boner on it. Oh, my gosh. And this was, I'm really excited. Okay, we'll open these at the end. Okay. Okay, so, um, so anyway, I had a list of things, right? And so for me, the list of deal breakers was major. Uh and I think this goes for anyone. There's like a list of things that you should never put up in relationships. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Abuse. Any type of abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Physical, mental, for sure, emotional, for sure. For sure. whatever it is. Abuse. Uh, infidelity. I, I, some people, um, you know, allow others in the relationship to go outside of it and they're mm -hmm. totally okay with it. But you, those are like things that you have to set. Boundaries in you have to set beginning. beforehand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people uh, can work through infidelity. For me, my relationship was over after that. Yeah. And that's just me. Yeah. Uh, lying, constant lying. Not, if you're not able to trust the person, any type of lack of support. If they can't support you in anything that you're doing, like, that's a huge major issue. Connect, communicate. Bad sex. Like, you know, yeah. I, I don't even want to say bad sex, but that you don't have a good connection. Mm -hmm. And you just never have. 
and you just cannot connect. Like, I just don't, for me, I'm going to sit there and be like, well, I don't know if this is going to get better. Yeah, yeah. Right, throughout time. They're emotionally unavailable or shut down. They're constantly using ultimatums in a relationship because they have controlling behavior. Mm -hmm. Like, these are things that I'm like, these are hard no's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So my deal breaker list didn't really have those as much. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Because I didn't didn't think of those things. Because to me, those were like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Right? But sometimes when you get into relationships, you realize that. Yeah. Like my ex, um, or I mean, my, some of my exes have been controlling in the past. They're like, no, you cannot do this or you cannot do that. And yeah, like, yeah. That's never. Yeah, what are you that. talking about? Yeah. Or they thought that infidelity was fine and lying constantly and abusing my trust. And these are things I kind of sat around and dealt with mm-hmm. because uh, I had, I wanted to see it through. I wanted to fix it. I yeah, wanted, yeah, yeah. I, and I have no problem being single, but for me, I was like, oh, let's just give this another go. Where I should have been like, that's my hard no. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Whereas if I'm in a relationship and the guy doesn't have, like, perfect abs or he chews with his mouth open or he farts in his sleep <sighs> or, like, he has long toenails. Yeah, yeah, And shit like that. Like, back in the day, those are things I would have been like, ew, gross. I would never date you. But yeah. to me now, I'm like, no. <laughs> Why does that matter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, that doesn't matter. And those yeah. are little things I think we're nitpicking too much. Yeah, for What do sure. you think? Um, I think that uh, people need to be honest about what they uh, bring to the table mm-hmm. as well. So yeah. what I think now, and this is what I touched on, I think that's where this was coming from, is on Ross Patterson Revolution, I was talking about how people are single for longer and more people are single now than ever before. Mm-hmm. Um, and either they're happy about it or they're not. Like sometimes they are just like, why can't I find someone? And then sometimes it's just like they're fucking cool with it and they can be alone. Um, I think that our lists of deal breakers or lists of things that we want um, or things that like make, you know, make us just like cut someone off like a bad like night of drinking or like, you know, uh, someone just any kind of flaw that someone has um i think you need to be honest with yourself as far as what you bring to the table and flaws that you have and don't you know we keep doing this stuff of like i deserve better and Mm. i just like can't you know like i need to be like treated like a queen and you have to make sure that you're a fucking queen in order to be treated like one and the other thing is like like a king on top of that like and also if you're gonna cut him off for some kind of you know, weird flaw or, you know, misstep or not infidelity, but I'm saying like just in life or whatever, Mm -hmm. you have to take into account your own shit where it's like when you put two humans together, there is always going to be like you have to be okay with certain flaws Mm -hmm. because that's humans, right? You can't ever be like, well, that's one of my things. And you're just like, well, you know what I mean? What's something that you maybe do like you I think that's the problem is that people are like they don't look inward they're looking at someone else and like making sure that they check all the boxes to be with them or whatever and that's we're just not as we're not as fucking awesome as we sometimes think we are true and I think it's just being honest with what you bring to the table and if you've dated enough guys you know that or girls or whatever. If you've dated, dated enough girls, you know that there's always going to be something. No mm-hmm. one is perfect. And Correct. sometimes it's the same things where it's just like, that's girls. Sometimes it's the same things where it's like, that's guys. Either you're going to, you know, love this guy enough to deal with guy shit. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to trade him in for another fucking guy that's going to do other guy shit. Okay. So, like, don't think that you're ever going to trade someone in for someone perfect. Yeah. Because that's never going to happen. So, I just think it's just being honest with the fact that like we all are human and no one is like a fucking queen that deserves to be treated like a you know what I mean yeah um that you are a human and you deserve to have people put up with your shit in the same way that you should put up with someone else's shit oh absolutely you have I think that's smart with any relationship to look at that even if it ends right it's just like I think I mentioned before it took me a little bit after um my divorce to sit there and be like okay what can I improve from this myself? Yeah. Because there was constant lying throughout years from this guy, right? For and, sure. And then it just ended in this explosion of just like, you never told me the truth. But then you I had probably had a feeling, though, that he was lying, right? 
Yeah, I would call them in white lies all the time to the point where well, I'd always be like, hey, if you're lying about all these small things, and of course you're going to lie to me about you're something big like cheating on yeah. me. Yeah. And so, but the That's thing true. is, I had to look back though, and, and I'm not giving anyone a hall pass or an excuse. I'm not saying the infidelity is ever excused. But at the same time, I had to look back at the relationship and go, what do I, could I have prevented that? Not even prevented that, but what could I have done better as a wife for him, right? For me. Mm-hmm. And that's what I had to do because I sat, I could sit there all day long and go, there's nothing wrong with me. It was all him, but it wasn't. I sure. need to love him. I need to show love a little bit more. I could be a little bit, I could definitely be less critical and could have been less the critical punishment of fit the crime. I'm not but saying the yeah, punishment, yeah, yeah. but what I'm saying is, and I'm not saying that because of what I did, it, it, yeah, yeah, it occurred yeah, in that way, yeah. but I'm always a saying that why not learn from it is it could be so easy for me to, to come from a relationship that might have ended like poorly or whatever, or have like the guy just do things that were so like a monstrosity. That everyone's like, oh my God. And I could sit there all day long and never learn from it. But at the same time I go, okay, well, I, I mean, I screwed up things too. Yeah. Does it make it right? Yeah. And there's definitely things that I purposely stayed when I shouldn't have. Yeah. And married probably when I shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. Right. And things I didn't feel comfortable with and little. Uh, and again, those are things I had to sit there and go, don't do that next time. To yeah. Me. Like, don't be okay with little white lies over and over again. Don't be okay with the lack of communication and just kind of blow it off. Right. Don't be okay with someone who has like super major anger issues you know what I mean and flies off the handle but at the same time I had to also sit there and go okay well what could I have done you know better as well Mm -hmm. in that aspect Mm -hmm. and what are my flaws yeah in a sense because what happens in relationships sometimes I feel like is you 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 get together with a person and it's great right and it's you in the honeymoon phase and it's wonderful and it's wonderful and then all of a sudden like habits and things come out right from other relationships or just who you are or whatever it might be and then all of a sudden like one person becomes super controlling and it doesn't let the other person do anything and they're just overcritical of everything that this person's doing so the other person maybe goes out and let's just say starts drinking Mm -hmm. right and that that's their coping mechanism to deal with the the critical overcritical like controlling environment that they live in and all of a sudden that controlling person's sitting there going oh my god you're an alcoholic now you're never like this before right where yeah it's easy to point the finger yeah and but you have to also sometimes sit there and go like well how did that happen like it shouldn't happen just it's not all my fault but yeah 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 right Mm kind of hand in hand but you're right along those lines um so you said that people tend to be more alone now than ever single yeah like single i should single and also just like moving on to the next person so like with tinder or dating apps or whatever Mm. like you just kind of you cut people off at any sign of something being bad oh okay um because you can just move on to the next person sure i mean i think everyone's different in this aspect where they're gonna figure out you have to know in your heart like when's the moment that you're sitting there going this is enough and for me like i had that deal breaker list like i didn't want someone who's constantly lying Right. Right. And like, I understand as just human beings, we're going to tell little white lies here and there. Like there might be issues. I like, but trust was like a major one. And if a guy wasn't going to work with me and some of the trust issues that I've had and stuff from the past and he wasn't patient enough, then to me, like, you know, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to be dealing with no, that no, the whole no. relationship and being like, why don't you trust me? Like, right. And that's the other thing too, along with that is that people are staying in things too, where it's like, I know. Hey, if that. you guys aren't married and you don't have kids and you're this unhappy, yeah, get out. You don't have like it's okay to be single when you're married and you have kids. It's a whole nother fucking ball game. So make sure at least before that you're okay. Yeah, you at least like can communicate and you are, you know, that you love each other and care about each other and want it to work because Mm -hmm. uh if it's not like that before something happens it's gonna be shitty after yeah here's the thing that i'll say about single being single is because i know there's some people out there who are afraid of being single who feel really unloved and who feel like they have to be in a relationship because everyone else and around them is in a relationship or there's people out there who jump from relationship to relationship because they just don't like being single single does not mean that you're alone yeah okay single does not mean that you're not loved. Yeah. Single means that you are sitting there loving yourself, taking care of yourself, and basically just, in a sense, you're priming yourself and getting everything ready 
for the next like you know you're waiting for the next relationship you're not hopping into one it's okay to not be in a relationship you're still loved you have all your friends and loved ones around you Mm -hmm. so that's not it Mm -hmm. and you're not alone like there's still tons of single people out there so that's one thing i want people to remember in in that whole aspect and for me i rather be single than be stuck in a shitty relationship yeah for sure all day long Mm -hmm. but i don't know if that's always the mindset of people you know um so that's just my big thing there and the thing is too is don't i wouldn't rush into a relationship and try to you know fall like i think it's hard to rush into a relationship and try to fall in love with someone when you're not in love with yourself yeah you don't have to be fully in love with yourself because i'll tell you right now i've been married and i'm not fully in love yeah. with everything with me but i had to get to a point to where i recovered um after the divorce and like i kind of felt like i lost myself there for a little bit and um you know just have to be like i had to sit there and find myself again and really truly love myself And i took care of things and i was independent and i loved it and the minute that i start really loving who i am or who i was and felt more secure and confident and didn't always feel the need to reach out and get validation from guys or whatever was the moment that all the guys start to kind of yeah yeah because they see that and to me i think it does us a disservice if we are so insecure and we feel like we always need someone the minute you get into a relationship we start to suffocate them Mm -hmm. sometimes right Mm -hmm. and also too if you don't really love who you are then how are you going to believe that someone else can really love you yeah right you're going to probably doubt them and be insecure and have trust issues and never believe any words that they say the entire time yeah so i don't say i don't say fully love yourself but you do need to be secure i think in who you are and come to love like the person that you are yeah and realize your strengths and work on your weaknesses so that's what i would say there Anything else to add on that? No. Okay. How do you feel about knowing each other's phone passwords, computer passwords, and having access to each other's phones? So some people say, you don't even need to worry about it. That's their shit. That's their Mm -hmm. private property. And if you're worried about it, and if you're Mm -hmm. going through that stuff, that means you can't even trust them, and you have major trust issues in that relationship, and you need to go focus on that. Other people say that, hey, that's part of it being in a relationship and you you know be open with one another if you don't have anything to hide why hide it so mm. what are your thoughts um this one i think is and i hate to be like not have an opinion about anything but this one i think really is uh to each their yeah to each their own yeah. like i have my you know we don't have me and my husband don't have pass codes or anything like blocked or anything ever mm-hmm. but at the same time, like, we don't have anything to hide um, at this stage. So, I don't know. I think um, in the beginning, you still maybe have, like, residual people calling or, you know, you talk to certain people, like, that may be misconstrued or whatever. But when you get to a certain point in your relationship, those things either fall off or you've taken you know you guys have had conversations about him or whatever it is Mm -hmm. um so at this point no yeah but at the same time it's like if you do i don't think that's necessarily something bad sure i'm kind of in the same boat here where i think it's every relationship's different and it's dependent yeah on it right and it depends on the situations too and you can tell when someone is being shady about their phone Mm -hmm. um i think just With a lot of these things, it's going to be just trust yourself and how you feel. And if it's constantly like someone's making you feel like they're hiding something, whether they are or they aren't, you're going to have to figure out what you need to do about that. Yeah. So whether they're a saint and you're just going crazy, you're going to have to figure that out. Yeah. Or if they're making you feel bad, you have to explore that. But it's kind of like, you know, whatever. That one's a... I know. That's a young person's game. At the beginning of Chris's and I relationship, we we did long distance for almost two years, so there was no way either of us were like going through each other's stuff. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but for me I had a big trust issue because of my past relationship and just past relationships. The way I grew up, <laughs> my dad my dad tried to protect us girls, right? Like just a daddy's girl. 
Um, but he kind of fed our minds with not always bad things, but when I look at it, like it probably wasn't the best thing to say every guy was like that. Yeah, yeah. But my dad grew up in a frat and he always wanted to protect us and he would be like, guys got like four things they're going to do. They're going to find you, friend you, fuck you and forget you or date you, dine you, dick you, ditch you. You know, right? And He's so not like totally wrong. And so he just was being loving, overprotective. And so but I think that's preparing you. I think that's preparing for the yeah. real world because it kind of is like True. that. And I did learn that in college too, right? Cuz and so I and later on in life, so that it did manifest itself later on. So for me, I always was thinking, can I trust these guys? And I see infidelity all the time in the military culture. And I'm not just saying it's not everywhere in the world, but it seems, you know, I just see it w- much more prevalent in the military culture. People are away from their families a lot and their wives all the time or their significant others. And they're kind of like, fuck it. Why not? They're not going to find out. Mm. And I t- absolutely am horrified by that. Mm. And so... Because of that, when we first were together, we had to somehow build up that trust. Even though he gave me no reason not to trust him at the beginning, I still had doubts from the past. Yeah, yeah Everything yeah. that I see, and even going TDY when we were together and seeing guys like cheat on their wives, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, exactly. Right? And so, like, I know he's an attractive, like, special forces guy living in the complete opposite end of the United States. And I'm thinking, what's stopping him? Yeah. So we had to really have really really good communication and then on top of that our biggest thing was like we would facetime each other at the end of the night if either of us went out so that we knew each other were home yeah yeah right so that we didn't put that in the back of each other's mind i will say per- like currently right now we both have codes to each other's phone but it's yeah. not like mainly it's just if he's driving and yeah, he's like yeah, hey yeah. my mom call, or like exactly. text him back it's not to go through each other's phone yeah, yeah and a lot of times too if we do want to i'll just tell him yeah. Like, hey, do you mind if I go through your phone? I'm having an, ins- like, you know what I mean? Okay. If, I, if I need to. What does he say? Sure, go like, ahead. Okay, so there's, um, I was just saying if I have to. I never really have done that. Oh, okay. There's been, like, one time where I did make a little comment. Uh, he was in a course, and uh, they, like, get trained on how to do all this sneaky shit and hide more things, right? I think we kind of, like, talked about this, and there was this app that was, like, downloaded. Oh, that yeah, was yeah, 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 Basically, like, yeah. this app that, like, it's encrypted, you can delete, and it's basically, like, the best cheating app out there. Oh, my gosh. But I kind of made a comment, like, you wouldn't, because, right? Right. My insecurities shine through sometimes. Sure. I'm, I'm a normal human being, and so I kind of was like, hey, you wouldn't do, <laughs> do anything shady, would you? <laughs> with that and he was like oh my god no, no oh my god no never why would you think that mm. and that's the thing too is guys or girls if your significant other just has questions of not being like threatening with it like oh my god like accusatory yeah but they just have doubts Re- just reassure them because if you get defensive about it it means that there's an issue mm-hmm. okay if you're like oh my god all you have to do is reassure them listen I know you, they shouldn't be bringing all the baggage into the relationship, but we're human and we have insecurities sometimes. The only and, reason to get defensive is if you have something to hide. Correct. Um, traditionally, that's just how it works. Yeah. Um, and so just be like, no, baby, I, listen, I know it could seem that way. You're my life. I love you. I would never do anything like that. And listen, you have access to my phone. You can look at it whenever you want. Hell, you can ask me if you want to look at the messages. I don't care. Yeah. Right? Stuff like that immediately alleviates any type of worry but that all, that all depends. Some people might sit here and go, oh, if you can't trust him, girl, why are you even married to him? Yeah. Well, listen. Yeah. I, this is just me. But there is people That's, that get married and, like, they are two, you know, they're two separate people with separate lives. I think that happens. back in the day, you know, or there are certain marriages that is, like, you need to completely trust them and be completely intertwined in everything that they do. And then there's some people that kind mm-hmm. of have their own lives in that even that even if like an ex you know contacts you or something that you are your own person enough to be like hey how are you cool great and just like leave it there um and not have to worry about what another human is going to think about a completely normal interaction Mm -hmm. i will say in the past um i did not want anyone to have access to my stuff for sure, and I think that's... But I was a little uh, bit younger. Yeah, but I think that's natural, right? And there was more, like, conversations before that that were probably a little bit, you know, if they read. That yeah, I wasn't yeah, yeah. Delete. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, you know, maybe kept options o- open-ish. Like, not in a bad way, but just... No, I think when you're... Like, I didn't... Younger I, before to me, you're, like, married, married. Yeah. I think you, like, will talk to people... 
um, with a little bit more of a reckless like abandon with it where you're just like so this person's talking to me like I'll just fucking text him like who cares Cares. whereas at a certain point either in your relationship or in your life you go like you think about that more correct um that's very true. So that's all. Because when we first started dating, my ex, like a guy who I barely dated would still text me from time to time. You know what I mean? And you're and like, "What's up?" Yeah, I don't just and be like, then hey. now, and, yeah. And, and Chris funny, and he just told me straight up, "I don't really feel comfortable with you still texting him." And I, I was like, "Oh, even though it was like just that one night." He's like, "Yeah, nah, okay." And I was like, "Cool." And I let yeah. the guy know, and I said, "Hey, no disrespect, but I'm in you know in a relationship now, and yeah, can't really." I'm not going to talk anymore. Yeah. And I didn't also say, hey, my boyfriend doesn't want me to talk to you anymore. No. I, made, I made it on me. Yeah. Because it was my decision and I was fine with that. Yeah. So I think to each their own, whatever works. Because before I was like, you will not breach my privacy. This is my shit. Yeah. This and you won't tell area. me who. I mean, I've lost relationships before because, and by lost, I mean we broke up, but mm-hmm. we should have broken up because I wouldn't like stop talking to you certain people in my life Mm -hmm. but when you're younger you have the uh when you're younger and you're not wanting to get married or not wanting to be in a serious relationship you have the luxury of doing that when you are in a marriage and you actually care about someone and how they feel and um you know how something affects them you think about things a little bit differently So now we have access to everything, inclu- but that's the thing too. That comes with a marriage. Like you can get into we sh- the phone bill, the bank account, yeah, like everything. But that's yeah. it's not to snoop primarily at all. It's no. to just help each other out and pay bills. Yeah, and all exactly. Shit. You're not trying to like if you want to. And so that's where I guess my red flag would be right if I am in a really serious commit relationship, fiance, marriage, and won't tell me the passcode changes yeah, it often, yeah, yeah, puts yeah, the phone yeah, down for always sure. brings the phone with them for won't sure. give me access to anything else that's when I'm gonna start asking those questions for sure because that's when it's sketchy to yeah. me right yeah so okay last one okay this is from a guy <laughs> okay okay so he goes I guess I have two questions he goes so first relationship I was with this girl for three months he's in the military I guess his leave got approved to like go hang out with her and he was ghosted by her Okay, so he goes, I got ghosted by her, but she was going going through some stuff before the relationship that I knew of. She had school going on. She was getting over an ex-boyfriend of hers and she had a lot of work. He goes, so, you know, we like talked for the three months. I knew she had all this shit going on. And he goes, I decided to give her her space. And by the time we were like, I guess, going to go on leave and like hang out, uh, she blocked me on everything and just mm-hmm. ghosted me. Mm-hmm. So he's asking, should I just have left when I noticed she had all this baggage at the very beginning and I even stuck around for the three months or should I have just tried to be there for her like I was? Mm. <laughs> this one's tough. Uh, Cause she clearly, this kind of goes back into the, uh, she clearly was still hanging out with someone or other people. And the reason that you're blocked is because she's with someone else. That's how I feel. Um, yeah, you don't block people unless, unless you're with someone else and you don't want to, um, deal with even the text coming up at all. To me, this kind of goes into the, one of the first questions that we went through was like, what are points where just, you need to need to cough relationships where we're being too picky or where it's too much. Right. Um, I think listen to, I think listening is a is a big one. So like listen to what people are telling you. So if she s- is saying to you, I have a lot of stuff going on. I'm very stressed. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. I'm like so consumed. I don't have time. I can't see you. I can't talk to you. Um, essentially is what she's saying. I mm-hmm. think you should have listened to that. Um, I think a little bit you might have been um really into her and you weren't really hearing what she was saying which was um that she couldn't really do that right now yeah or she didn't and, want to um cuz it's believe me, not she, your and, and believe job me, if she wanted to she would she would make you a priority and she would be saying um i've got a lot of stuff i've got a lot of stuff going on but like i still you know like it's not a big deal i i want to see you like yeah. when when someone really wants to see you they kind of minimize the um bad stuff that is Hap- mm-hmm. or like things that will get in the way of seeing you like they'll go above 
and beyond. They'll probably like not go to work because they want to hang out with you or they won't deal with something that they're stressed out about to hang out with you. Yeah. But if they're leading with all of the things that are preventing them from hanging out with you, what they're trying to say is they can't hang out with you. Yeah. And what you need to do is listen. And um, I know it's a guy asking. So I'll and just guys have say, a hard time listening. <laughs> So I'll just <laughs> say, real. Um, I'll just say that you probably liked her a lot, and you weren't hearing what she was saying. I'll so say I this think people too. tell you, people tell you what they want and what they need, uh, pretty much all the time. They For may the most not, part, they yeah. may not come out and say it, but they are telling you either with body language or things that they're saying or not answering, not calling you back. That's someone's way of telling you. That they don't want to hang out with you, but you're just not really listening because you really like them. Mm -hmm. And so it's no one's real fault. I mean, the blocking, like I said, that is um, something else that's going on with her that you don't want to, you just don't want to deal with it anymore. I promise. One thing that I think is important is the communication aspect, right? You've touched on listening, which is huge. And just every relationship, I think communication too, along those lines is... For me, any time when I was dating and like getting into relationships, I would let the person know like what I was looking for. Yeah, whether I was whether I was looking for a serious relationship with them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, or whether I was just like looking to be friends and hang out, friends yeah. with benefits. If yeah. this was something casual and I wasn't really looking for anything yet, right? Yeah. As it progressed later on, I would let them know. But like this is something that I think y he should have maybe asked the girl, right? I the problem he is he might have. I he could have, and I'm just saying. But that's where you know too if she's kind of like. And again, I'm not saying that she said anything. Like sure. She doesn't sound like someone that can really voice what she needs or what she wants. Well, we got very hence little information being, here. Hence being, well, if you ghost someone and block them, you're not good at communication. That's Correct. all I'm saying. But what I'm saying, though, is at the very get-go, if, if, you if you're said, asking, yeah. and I'm not, so if you're asking her, like, hey, I really like you a lot, and we've been talking for a little bit, I'm just curious, you know, if you're, like, looking for something, mm -hmm. like, this should kind of be... You should at least know you're on the same page with someone because if you were looking for something serious and this person's not, mm -hmm. um, while the telltale signs might be there and you should be listening to it, a lot of times that's not that, you know, people have a hard time wanting to see it. So maybe the communication yeah, exactly. of it. And right? she probably, like I said, she must have made him feel uh, good and like, liked. like there was a chance or that she did like him. So that sure. was her words and um what happened was her actions were not matching and mm -hmm. you just didn't really listen to that yeah so for me it would go i, I would talk to the person and say hey what do we want if i find this on the same page cool if i don't then i have to go ahead and figure out i'm gonna balance it out and and weigh my options and go do i really want to try this or do i want to go on to something into something a little bit more serious once you guys figure out if you're going to like be together and kind of like talk, then pay attention to the telltale signs. If you want to stick around for three months or longer and, and deal with stuff like that, like that's on you. But personally, like if I noticed that, that they still were getting over an ex, like I don't want to be with someone who's still getting over an ex. Personally, me. No. I don't want to. Or I can deal with being busy with school and work. Right. As long as they're trying to make time for me still. If they're not, then that's where I'd probably sit yeah. there and go like, if you hey, don't, If you keep like calling and you don't get an answer or texting you don't get a text back or you know um they yeah you've tried to call them whatever then you have to understand that even if it is that they're super busy if it's not going to work for you that's how it's going to be you know what I mean yeah like, here's, here's what I'll say too at the minute the girl starts talking to you about guy problems or their ex you're getting in the friend zone man like um you yeah you're definitely to that not, friend zone. yeah yeah now all of a sudden like and you like she's her also thinking so you're about sitting him. there like talking to her about these things and her problems and you become that guy where she goes over her problems about and she's just talking about getting over the ex but there might be like a little spark there you probably like her more yeah so yeah that could happen too and that happens pretty easily sometimes with people yeah uh okay so he said next i started talking to another girl he's okay. like well, we're in a crossroads right now he goes, would you move or should someone move if they really like someone? And what he means by that is um, he goes, I'm from a, I like the small town, but she likes the big city. So I don't even know how long they've been together. Do they live in the same place? No. It's and they're the, moving together or he's going to move to where she is? I don't know. This is. Is, this is all I got. Uh, so this is all I got. Here's the thing. For me to move for someone at all, to like live closer to them, like... <laughs> 
I need like a ring probably. Yeah. Uh, it has to be super serious where I know I'm probably going to get mm-hmm. engaged. There's a way in hell that I'm moving for someone that I've been talking to for like a couple of months. Yeah. Even if it's not, I don't know. Like not even if it's a year, maybe like, I don't know. I would just deal with it. Like that's what I mean. Chris and I, for example, like yeah. I know we couldn't really move because of our situation. I probably could have tried to move sooner if I really wanted to. But we just dealt with the long distance. If yeah. You want, you want it. I was, part of me was like, I'm not going to move for this guy. Even though it's six months, I was like, oh, I love him. I could totally marry him. Right. I wasn't going to. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, Until yeah, yeah. I realized we were getting married. Yeah. And we were engaged and going to buy house, like talking about buying houses. And I was like, oh, we probably should, should probably move out yeah. to near you. Um, So that's it's hard because we have very little information to work with Very little here. information. And he sounds, I don't know if he's really young, but he well, sounds very young. Uh, because if you don't know this, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, play the tape to the end, buddy. So if, you know, you're going to go and move for someone, just make sure that you can see it not working and what you're going to do after that. You know? Yeah. I want to, I wanted to find out cause he's, he, in regards to something, cause I said, Hey, yeah, we'll talk about that for you. And he's like, as you can see, I jump into relationships quickly or something, or I get like, uh, really, I don't know what he said. So I, maybe that's, maybe that's a piece of advice that I would probably give, you know, is don't feel like you have to rush into relationships quickly. Mm-hmm. If they're not working, then don't go, don't force it either. Go visit wherever. I don't know. That one's a hard one. Yeah. I mean, personally, me, I'm not going to move for someone. No. You know? No. I'm not going to move for someone unless I have a commitment. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, buddy. And here's the thing, too. Sorry, buddy. This is you need, to, you need to fucking calm down a little bit, <laughs> to be honest with you. Let's just be real. You, you need to calm down. Maybe look for pussy a little bit closer to home and, like, figure out... What you want to do. Uh huh. And take your time. Calm down. If you move this place, she doesn't fucking, she ghosts you. Some, this girl uh, ghosts you too, blocks you too. Make should, sure you're going to have a, a fucking place to live, a job, because you don't want to be left in a fucking, in the lurch somewhere that you have no one around you. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely 100% something that can happen and happens all the time. Here's what I'll say is number one, if a person wants to be with you, they'll make it happen no matter what. And even long distance, right? Yeah. Like big town, small town, whatever. Number two, if it comes to the point where like you have multiple girls go seeing you, I would probably maybe do a little bit self-reflection and go, what am I doing to probably drive them to this point a little bit more? I'm not saying that's right that they do, but when a girl feels like she just can't get away from you, and you don't respect her space and she's like, hey, I'm done talking to you and you keep bothering her and trying to reach out and yeah. like, she's going to block like you. You need to listen to you. them. Yeah. You need to listen to them and you need to calm down. <laughs> That's my advice for you. You know what I think is, is the uh, Taylor Swift song? You need to calm down. Yeah, you need to calm down and you need to like <laughs> so take your loud. time. Mm-hmm. And again, you sound very uh-uh, young. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't know uh-uh, if you're young, uh-uh. but you need to live a little bit more life, buddy. And don't... Uh, don't fucking rush into things. Yeah, don't rush into things. Jesus Christ. So, okay, let's open up. Okay, let's open these this. packages. I know who this one's from because I know her. This is one of the girls that we did bro, the week, did hers. I went through basic training with her. Oh, my gosh. I'm what excited. is this? So this is from Janae. Okay. So it's the Tiff and Jesse. What um, do we got? What do I we know, got? I'm really excited. Oh, my God. This is so cool. Okay, so it says it's late. Um, but you still love it. Ha ha. From Janae and Bacon Bits. Oh, it's a holiday card. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Is that her, her? That's her cat. cat Bacon, Bacon Bits. Bits. That's, that's a really cute So we'll name. have to put this up. That's really, really cute. Oh, she's in the corner with her um, face mask. Perfect. That. So we have Perfect. a big package here. Okay, so this I know also is from, I think it's Rick Abend. Um it Did is barbecue it? sauce. Uh, oh, is it? It is. And it's really, really good. I don't know if there's something else in there. So the one thing that I love about this box is I think on every <sighs> side of it, it says Lady Boner. Lady Boner. So, so I'm really sucking I have no way of opening as this, a seer guy think, right now. Hold on. I, I got it. 
Yeah. I really suck as a seer guy because I don't have a knife on me because I'm dressed all cute. Excuse me. Uh, but uh, we got this. Don't look like that. Man, they put like a lot on here. <laughs> I think it's a big loop. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're going to open this up, and then we're going to do a broette. Do you have broette? I do have a broette. Okay. Oh, okay. Whoa! Whoa! This is cool. Oh, my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, my gosh. What is this? Oh, is this for Ross? Wow. Holy shit. Is there like wow, a, a lot in here. is there like a no, a letter, a thing, a I'm whatever? Right. Are you gonna tell me who it is? I don't know. I don't know what is in all of it. Okay, okay, so here we go. Okay. If I'm right, then I am. I mean, like, I have oh a, my gosh. a lot of stuff here. Okay, it says good morning, party people. First off, congratulations on the new show. You guys are killing it. Second, uh, congrats on, yeah. These so awesome. I, th so I thought that I would share a few tips, spices, sauces, and secrets with you guys. Oh my gosh! So what do we have here? So the Scott Santa Maria seasoning. Where's this? Okay. Oh, this right here. Oh, that looks really good. This is my go-to seasoning. You can get it at the local Albertsons. Um, Albertsons, the, California, the baby. Yeah. He usually gets it in a five pound tub from Scott's online for like $45 and lasts about eight months. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Uh, set, or for example, let's see, Traeger, is that what it's called? Mm hmm. Traeger at uh, 450. Okay, so he goes into food. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to read all, all about this. that. Who is it? Who, who is it? Rick and Monica. End. Okay, so Rick and Ben and Monica. Thank you so, so much, Basically, you guys. what they do here, you're going to love this. They give you a bacon recipe, um, which we'll share okay, with you guys. Please. They tell you Woo! exactly how to use the seasoning and their spices over Our here. first fan mail. And I think we got something for Ross, too. Probably, if not, it's going to be for me. No. <laughs> if, uh, it says, thanks you. again for making millions of people smell each week. You both are awesome. And you uh, the offer stands for the Mastros to make you guys dinner anytime you're out in California. Thanks. So congrats on the new podcast, Rick and Monica. This is awesome. Thanks, Thanks Rick. So much stuff. I don't even know what's in it. We'll have Holy to open shit. it up I know. Later. We're going to like go through it. Shit. So, but we do have a drinking broette of the week. All right. This one was submitted by Stephen Haas. So he goes, what's going on, drinking broettes? I wanted to start off by saying you girls are funny as hell, and I have listened to all your episodes thus far. Yeah, man, fan. Thanks, buddy. I want to nominate my beautiful wife, Kelsey, for broette of the week. Her and I have been together for about four years now. We met in the Army Reserves, and we have been in love with, um, and I've been in love with her ever since. My wife is a true bad bitch. <laughs> Not only has she given me three beautiful children, but they were all C-sections. And with our second kid, she was getting her nails done while going into labor. <laughs> I love her. It does take a while. Good job, My girl. wife is my rock. Not only does she um, support my career as a police officer in Phoenix, but she raises our three kids, does the Army Reserve thing, and has recently started a new career as a unit administrator to where everyone calls her to fix things for them, even though um, she hasn't officially technically started the job yet. So the way she does the balancing act and raising the family and having a career and dealing with my, sar my sarcastic ass is completely unbelievable. Just to top it off, she has started training to compete in a bodybuilding show oh after giving birth to our third child not even a month ago. Get it, oh, girl. Oh, shit. Get it. So it says, the, my wife is the love of my life, and I hope she can be nominated for Bro of the Week. Hell yeah, she can. Of course. He says, lady boners for life. And freedom on. Yes. Yes. Steven. Okay. Well, Kelsey, this is for you. Thank you Cheers. so much for your badassery um, and for just giving us women daily a great name. Seriously. Shit. People like you. I know, right? And bodybuilding competitions are not. No joke. You no did joke, one yeah. too, huh? Oh, yeah. Ugh. Never would do one ever again. Yeah. But you probably learned a lot. That of was good me, stuff. though. My That's best me trainer. Yeah, the best trainer I had was a 
bodybuilt like she would get girls ready for it Mm -hmm. so like the tips and tricks that you have not that you do that hardcore yeah but the tips and tricks are pretty good oh yeah i'll say this um the i want to do like part of the food prep again like the part where i was just like tons of energy yeah had a little bit of abs was feeling really good about myself was still curvy right? like, i want to do that but it takes a lot of commitment <laughs> i don't know if i have that yeah exactly right now. Need, i like, like wine someone wine and food and chocolates and food and all the other stuff all right let's uh get some shit yeah so some you guys shit. can go ahead and find us before we end here um jesse wiseman and all the shits Tiffany Hart on everything. Also, you guys can find us at Drinking Bruts Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, and TikTok. TikTok. We're viral, bitches. Our uh, wine video, if you guys haven't seen it, went a little viral on funny. ours. We went and a little viral. Yeah, just a little. Oh. So it's pretty cool. And um, if you guys really like the podcast and you guys really want to, please rate and review us on iTunes. It help us out a lot. I love reading the, the reviews really on there. They're really good. They're great. And uh, we really appreciate the love that you guys constantly are showing us. So I think it's time to, uh, we're going to go to the bank and then we get got, some money. We got beach. your birthday dinner tonight. Oh, that's right. Some food and wine, girl. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you later. See you guys. Yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl I'm moving on. Yeah, don't show better things to do. Yeah, go buy some fucking shoes. Yeah, you're irritating. Yeah,